Welcome to Distance Learning Day 2, the Virtual Earthquake Lab. To start the lab, you want to click on the link provided. As you click on to the link, you will be guided towards a geology online lab. Here, you will complete a series of tasks to get your virtual seismologist certificate of completion. Click on the execute an earthquake and then you're going to answer the questions on in maroon. After you answer the questions in maroon you are then going to choose one of the last three, two, three, or four to complete on your own. I'm going to show you how to complete the San Francisco area earthquake. Click Submit, and it will show you a map of where the earthquake occurred. The first thing we need to measure is the distance between the S and the P, or the primary and the secondary wave arrival times. Click View Seismograms. And you're going to notice that the primary wave always starts at zero. So you're recording into the first blip of when the secondary wave arrives. So for this one, we're going to say it's about 48 seconds. Enter it in the box and move on to the second station. So we always start at zero, and then we go down to about 72 seconds. The third station, again, we start at zero, and then that first blip comes in at right about 65 seconds. You're then going to convert the S and P interval. What you will do is use this graph and this line to figure out the distance the epicenter is away from the station. The S&P interval was 48 seconds. So in my time, I'm going to go up to 48 seconds. Where does it cross over my S&P interval line? At 480 kilometers. Same thing with the 72 seconds. Where does it cross over? At 700 kilometers. And lastly, in Nevada, Las Vegas, 65 seconds. Just under 640. So let's put 638. After you get done with that, go ahead and click Find Epicenter. And you should notice that all three of your circles should come very close to crossing each other at one point. Okay? So we're going to look at the true epicenter based on where my epicenter numbers came up, right? And we're very, very close. So then we can move on. If your epicenter is far off, or if all these three circles cross at different parts, you need to recalculate those distances. Now we're going to compute the Richter scale, or the amplitude. This will give us how the, the magnitude of the earthquake. So what we do is we always measure from the rest line to the crest of the highest amplitude. So for this amplitude, we're going to look between 200 and 250. Each of these blue lines is this was over 250. So this was 290. The second one was just above 50. 
So this would be 60. And the last one was right on 100. You're going to notice that all three of our marks cross the magnitude right at 7.1. So I'm going to enter my magnitude as a 7.1 and confirm my magnitude. Now, you're going to get a congratulations. You've done a great job. You're not done. You have to enter your name, first name, enter your last name, South Lakes High School, in Reston, Virginia. You do not need to email the certificate, nor do you need your instructor's email address or your email address. After you've entered those three pieces of information, click Get Certificate. You need to open Snagit or Snippet or whatever you have on your computer that will take a screenshot. And from there, you need to screenshot both the certificate and then your information down underneath. Once you do that, you will paste those, that information back into the, your document today and then complete the rest of the document as instructed.